This is the first video in a series of videos on arrhythmia. We're going to talk about a number of causes of arrhythmia um, and how this can lead to consequence. So in this introductory video, I just want to talk about the four main things that can lead to dysrhythmia, or kind of the four main causes of, of things that are going to lead to us having irregular heartbeat or irregularities with our heartbeat. Just to give a brief overview of the conduction system so that we know what we're talking about when we start uh, highlighting each is up here obviously we have the SA node, so SA node. We have our AV node. And we have our bundle of his, or his bundle. We know that impulses are going to be generated by the SA node to travel to the AV node. So we have uh, our S, the, the branches coming off the SA node that go to the AV node. We have a Bachmann's bundle. It's going to travel from the uh, SA node over to the uh, left atria. From the AV node, we're going to have our impulse travel to the bundle of his. From the bundle of his, our impulse travels down the bundle branches. It's important to note that our impulses are going to travel down our, uh, in someone who does not have arrhythmia or irregularities, the impulse is going to travel down the bundle branches at the same time. That's what's giving us a nice uh, narrow QRS complex. And what else is important to note is that generally our heart rhythm is going to follow um, the fast pathways within the conduction systems. Obviously, there's some safeguards built in and there's some checks that are not going to allow the rhythm to go too fast. But the heart's looking for efficiency. And uh, as a result, the impulse is going to travel down the normal fast pathways that are present. Now, when these things get disrupted, that's when we have an arrhythmia. So an arrhythmia is basically an irregularity or a disruption to normal uh, cardiac conduction. And this can occur through a number of reasons. And we're going to talk about a couple in this video, and then we're going to make a couple videos on uh, two other ones specifically. So the first thing that can happen is we can have uh, a conduction disturbance. And all that means is a conduction disturbance is a blockage um, or something that's preventing normal conduction from occurring. Next, we can have an ectopic beat, and this is when just something other than the normal pacemaker of the heart decides to take over and generate an impulse. We can have a re-entry pathway occur, and this is one of the most common causes of tachydysrhythmia. And the last is altered automaticity, or we change the function of the pacemaker cells so they are more or less automatic, leading to tachyobradydysrhythmia. So the first thing I want to talk about is conduction disturbance, or what is a conduction disturbance? And really, if we're thinking about conduction disturbance, it's a blockage of normal conduction. So for example, uh, or blockage of the normal fast pathways. So for example, if we talk about something like a bundle branch block, or we always talk about our left versus right bundle branch blocks, what's occurring in that instance is we have blockage of the normal fast pathway within one of our bundle branches. So if we look, um, we'll take a look at the left bundle branch here specifically. Um, and if we look at what happens is we have, we picture a highway of conductive tissue and we have our normal fast pathway that travels down. So this is our bundle branch that we're looking at here. And say we have our normal kind of area of conduction. Uh, so we'll put some kind of conduction fibers in here to, to make it make a little bit more sense. So if what's happening is our heart normally follows this fast conduction pathway. So take this path down our bundle branch and we have a conduction disturbance or something that's blocking this path. So for some reason, I can no longer take this path and I have to switch to another pathway that's likely slower than this pathway. I can lead to a bundle branch block. So in this instance, what we see is we have this slower pathway that's taking over, so we have a slow pathway. So this conduction disturbance is blocking the normal fast pathway in which our impulse would normally travel, and as a result, it must travel down a slower pathway. This is the reason why we see widening of our QRS in the bundle branch block, because as the impulse travels down uh, the right bundle branch, uh, in this case, because the left one is impaired, it travels very quickly down the right bundle branch just as it should, but as it gets to the left bundle branch, it's going to travel quickly until it reaches the block, and then it's going to travel very much slower through this bundle branch. And we start to see a widening of the QRS complex as, as they're not traveling down those bundle branches at the same, same time.
So conduction disturbance is a blockage in normal fast conduction. So blockage in normal fast conduction pathways. Now this uh, block can be a block of the fast conduction pathway like we've shown here, or we could have a full block of the, a conduction pathway. So what happens is we aren't letting fast or slow pathways get by so we can have a complete block so you can have a complete blockage where we allow no impulses to get by or we can have a blockage of fast conduction a good example of a complete blockage is a third degree block or a block where our sa node is firing we're having an impulse travel um, to the interventricular bundle or to the bundle branches, but it's not making it any further. And then we have the ventricle beating on its own. So because of this complete, complete block, we have the SA node trying to work, we have the ventricles trying to work, but they're completely dissociated because of this blockage in between the conduction pathway. The other thing I want to talk about in this video is uh, an ectopic beat. An ectopic beat occurs when we have an area outside the normal pacemaker, so the SA node, the AV node, the bundle of his if needed, so an area outside the normal pacemaker decides that it's going to uh, send an impulse. So we might have, you know, a, a cell in our bundle branches or Purkinje fibers down here that all of a sudden decides that it wants to take over. So if we're looking at kind of our cell pathway here that's coming down. What can happen is one of these cells decides that it's going to generate the impulse. And this usually is gonna come in the form of a premature beat. Um, doesn't have to, but normally it's gonna come in the form of a premature beat. It sends out an impulse and can trigger uh, conduction. So if the impulse is now being generated from this area right here, what happens is obviously it's going to travel down this part of the conduction, but it's also going to travel back up through the conduction pathway here. So an ectopic beat is not only going to come out of line or it's going to come out of turn or it's not going to be coming uh, during the uh, with the right tempo. The ectopic beat is also going to stimulate um, a retrograde uh, impulse or uh, it's going to stimulate an impulse that's not following the normal conduction pathway. It's important to note about these ectopic beats is they can be just uh, once in a while, so we can see the odd uh, ectopic beat occurring, or the ectopic beat can actually take over as the pacemaker of the cell. For example, uh, in something like ventricular ta tachycardia, if we have an ectopic beat that's occurring, or we have an ectopic foci that's occurring in the ventricles, um, but because it may be reentrant re in nature, and we're going to talk about reentry in the next uh, video, it can actually take over as the pacemaker. So we can see just these kind of unifocal reentries, or we can see the reentry occurring once in a while, or you can have a reentry that actually takes over uh, as the actual pacemaker of the cell. That's just a, a simple breakdown of conduction disturbance versus ectopic beat. See the next couple of videos for uh, more information on reentry pathways and altered automaticity.